Must have been on the right, it's one and a half bones. Yes. Okay. One and a half. Okay. But the thing is, what's your load? You see, you can put a load here. You can put some kind of weight here. So you have to calculate this load here to work with what you have as potential. Without calculating the exact load, you're never going to charge the batteries. You're going to deplete the batteries. And no, you can't put a capacitor in place of this battery. It's not the same thing. Okay? This is, this is what Tom Beard and I refer to differentials and potential. And so, no, you cannot put a capacitor here. And no, you cannot put a capacitor here. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to deplete itself and it's going to stop working. All right? So, let's get right down to the basics, how we switch this, so that you can understand the switch. And then we'll get it, we'll, we'll do the whole circuit and we'll show you a running model and we'll show you it optically coupled, so we made it a little bit easier for you this time. So, what we did with the switches is at that time, optocouplers were, weren't very good. And so, actually, this transistor would have been in the circuit this direction between the two batteries. Today we have FETs. You could probably do this really easy with FETs. With what? With a MOSFET. What's a MOSFET? Uh, field effect transistor. Okay. Okay, so now if we put this battery here. So if, if everybody that's interested in the Tesla switch needs to do these simple experiments, they just better do it because it's the only way you're going to learn how this works. So I don't care where you put your meter or your light. That would be the switch. Right now, there's nothing flowing anywhere because we haven't turned this device on. So, how are we going to turn this device on? Well, somebody's going to come and say, well, you could just put a resistor here and bias the base and it turns it on and turns the light on. Wrong. That's not what we're after here. We're after switching. So what we did was we took an audio transformer the 1K side and the 8 ohm side went on this side. So that when, when we took this and put our pulse into this, it turned this device on and this light flashed. So just imagine this now with bigger batteries, with field effect transistors or any of the newer devices um, with bigger batteries and better currents and better circuits and everything that we have today, right? We could get some real power down here, but it's only going to be the differential power. So I want everybody to understand that. So if you have 12 here and you have 12 here and 12 here, you have only 12 to work with minus the drops. So if you have one volt drop, you have 11 to work with and two to recharge the battery. Because you have to be over the battery. And the, the way you can tell that you're over the battery is you're ending up with 24 volts here when this is on. So that leaves 12. But since the potential is 24, it's a little bit higher than what everybody thinks. And the batteries keep climbing upward. So that's the, main, that's the basic switch. That was the basic switch. This was a 2N5885.
originally. And I know what the diagram says because these devices all work. 2N3055H. Not just a 2N3055. It has to be an H device. Now, why do I say H? Because a 2N3055 has a little chip in it like this, and the H device has a chip in it that's about that big in comparison, which means it can handle more current. So, there's one of the key things right there, is you want a device that at least can handle 25 amps. It has big wires, and there's not much of a loss. And when we're talking about the diodes, we, uh, we used high-frequency diodes at the time called MR852s. They were 20 kilohertz diodes. 3 amps. Because we thought we were going to be switching up in all these high frequencies, that's the only reason we use that diode. And that's why you see it in the schematic. Today you'll use a Schottky diode with a lower, much lower DCR and much faster cutoff. DCR being what? Uh, the resistance through the diode, the drop. So we want to keep this drop as low as we can get it. We want to keep it below 0.7 if we can keep it there. So that's, that's basically how the switch operates. You put the pulse in here, this triggers it, and when you look at this with the audio transformer, you're going to look at a spike like that. You know, you're not going to see uh, a perfect square wave on the device. You're going to see something that looks like that, which is just going to instantaneously turn this thing on so before the actual current can get through the circuit, it's already there. This potential is already over on this side. John, this is the same way that you've yes. shown in all your stuff, isn't it? Yes, like all uh, negative and uh, radiant circuits, they all work the same. There's no way around them. Uh, when the radiant goes off the scale, things explode and vaporized. That's what happened to Ronald Brent. So... Well, this has nothing to do with the collapsing coil. Here. No. It no has nothing to do with the collapsing coil. It has to do with this instantaneous switch that appears before the current drags this down. And I've drawn that on my internet site. I've always showed you these in graphs on my internet site. And everybody says, well, he talks in riddles, he gives it. But if you understand what you're looking at, you're, you're going to understand that I'm talking about potentials here. That this is going to become a delta T. And that water's going to flow downhill. It's not going to go uphill. You see? So... You know, there were no riddles on my internet site. It's just the people that went there didn't understand what they were looking at. Oh, that can't possibly work. That isn't the way you do engineering. That's, so that's uh, the difference. Oh, yes, it is the way you do engineering. It's the difference between if you're not switching that on, you're just leaving them in parallel. Right. It's going to be a big difference. Right. You can turn this on. You can very simply just take this transformer out of here and do what the electrical engineering school is going to teach you to do. And that's just bias this thing on and, and adjust it with a voltage divider. And there, you can turn your light on. And now you just got a steady current through the whole circuit. And you're, not, you're, you're just defeating the whole purpose of the switch. Because the idea is, is to break things up in pulses. So that you're not burning the energy constantly in the circuit. You want to turn it off before the current can catch up. 